Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Woody Van Club podcast. I am Maddie, here with... Courtney, hello, and this week we are reviewing this book, Funny You Should Ask, by Alyssa Sussman. Now, Maddie and I have many things to say about this book, and we didn't discuss any of them yet. We just told each other that there were many things to say, and there are indeed many things. This book is a mixed bag, but I will let Maddie give us a little rundown of the plot before we delve into it. Oh, I forgot that it was my week to do this. Okay. It is. I had to look up how to say her name, too. I did, too. I did, too. (laughs) I was was saying it in my head... um, how was I saying it in my head? I was saying it in my head wrong. And then I was like, I do not know how to say this girl's name. So her name is Chani. Chani. <laughs> oh, it's a Chani for me. It's She's Jewish. It's Chani. Chani. Yeah. Okay, well then fucking YouTube lied to me. I, actually, I was saying Chani. Chani is how you say it according to YouTube. That's what I was trying to think. Chani is the way, ah. wrong way to say it. Chani is the way that you say it on youtube but i'll say honey because that's <laughs> okay. more accurate i was con- i was honestly uh, we'll get into this but there's like a whole part of this book where they talk about how to pronounce her name and i had already looked up how to say her name and i was like i still don't understand what you are trying to say right now <laughs> well, hannah i well, how does reason- hannah, hannah apply into this yeah i don't I don't know where anyone would get that from, but it because she mentioned so many times in the book that nobody could say her name right, I was like, I have to figure this out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so honey. So there's conflicting reports, but for I think, my, my I think resources. I, I have no problem with them using, like the author using a traditional Jewish name. Like I have no issue with that. Yeah. I just wish that she would have put at the beginning of the book, like before you even get into the book, like this is how you pronounce her name. Because I think that that would have, I don't know, made it a little bit, easier for me or had like a little qr code with like a video to like how to pronounce it (laughs) just use phonetics like they could have just put like ha and you gotta have some like phlegm in there honey 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 horowitz yes okay so the story (laughs) it is about (laughs) honey horowitz and gabe parker now before we get into it before i even tell you what this is about this is actually based on a GQ article about Chris Evans. <laughs> okay. So, Gabe no is idea. supposed to be Chris Evans. Wait, Chris Evans is, is Captain America. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I for a second I was thinking it was Chris Pine. There's so many Chris's in Hollywood. I don't <laughs> even know which one is which. Um, but yes. True. So it's it's based on a GQ article with Chris Evans. It, everything like even down to like the dog. I think is like in that article. Oh my gosh! I yeah. had no idea. I know. The more you know. Okay. So this story follows Honey and Gabe, and they Honey is a. She's a writer. She writes for, uh, you know, pu- like public paparazzi type thing, GQ esque Vanity Fair magazine, and she mm-hmm. has been assigned to write an article about Gabe Parker, who is the male love interest, who is becoming the first American James Bond. I know. So this is where I started to get a little confused at first because. This okay. There, a I thought that there was like an age gap going on here because I don't know how you feel about James Bond, but to me, James Bond is a forty-five-year-old man, always. Uh, yeah, yeah. He starts out at forty-five. Like, he was born forty-five. Daniel, what's his name? Daniel Craig. Yes. Yes, it's it's and like Daniel Sean Craig. Connery oh and God. all the other James Bonds before. Yeah, like silver foxes. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. They're not these young guys. So they're basically Gabe Parker is is supposed to be like this new guy who's gonna be the new James Bond. He's American, so he has to do like a fake accent, and everybody's basically like he's not the right choice. In fact, it should have been his co-star in his previous film, Oliver Mathis, and because of that, they want to interview him to see like why. Why were you chosen? Like, what what makes you so great? What makes you think that you're going to be the the next great Bond in the movies? And the story takes place in really like 500 perspectives. The first, (laughs) first, there's two main perspectives, and that is past and present. There's also the story told from 
like observers that uh, that come in the new, the form of like news articles, and then there's also the ones that are like Hani's own recount of it in like a diary format that she does through like a blog. So we yes. get like a lot of stuff that happens, and basically it happens over the span of three days, of six days total. This, this this whole book takes place in six days total over the course of ten years. So Hani's like, interviewing. <laughs> Honey, it's not looking good for the realism pillar already. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's a whole nother thing. Um, basically, they they just like they have a bond and a bond. <laughs> they have a bond, <laughs> a James Bond, and they uh, just I don't know. They just kind of vibe, I guess. And beats me. I never caught on to a vibe, but I, I picked up on like zero chemistry. No chemistry. <laughs> okay, this isn't the critiques. I've got the- <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I just I have literally so much to say about this one that supposed bond. Yes. So they have like a supposed James Bond, and they are I don't know, trying to like work through it. The first three days it ends horribly. We don't really know why it ends so poorly, like why they didn't talk to each other for 10 years and essentially 10 years later people are like oh we really want you to like do this interview again just like you did the first time and they're both like okay I guess we can do this again and instead of doing what they did last time they don't do that and they do something else but that's a spoiler so I'm not gonna tell you what they're doing but yeah that's that's essentially this book um it is second chance i think technically second chance romance um sure yeah and i think that's really the only the main trope i was picking up on i thought uh, up until literally the last 30 pages i thought that there was this was also an age gap because i genuinely thought that gabe parker was like in his 40s yeah and that she was like in her 20s also, she has, like, a horrible ex-boyfriend, which literally, red flag, like, honey, you are so dumb. You need, <laughs> <laughs> like, you even know that he's treating you poorly, and you're just like, okay, whatever, I'll just take it. Yeah, I, he was just terrible. Like, there weren't even any redeeming qualities that she mentioned about him in the book, so I'm like, okay, well, miseducated queen, why? Yeah. Are you with him then? Who knows? Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that is essentially the book. Um, there's a lot I want to talk about, but a lot of it has to do with spoilers. So I don't want to get too into it. But there are this book. Okay. So this book is something that I saw a lot of people critiquing online. Like people are like, this is like a book talk miss. And I like to be the judge of things for myself. That's why we've read some pretty bad tiktok books on here and we, but we've also read some really good tiktok books so certainly true so i was kind of going into this with like an open mind thinking that like okay maybe some people are just really harsh like i'm really harsh so like maybe there's just being a me for a moment but no this book has a lot of flaws and a lot of issues and i think that the writing itself was not horrible it was definitely not like the greatest writing and you can tell there's this thing in writing where people are plotters and they're pantsers people who plot books well ahead they know everything that's going to happen every single chapter so that it can influence things that happen you know later on down the line in future books and in other parts of the book and everything like that then there's also people who write the book as they go so they're writing each chapter and they're getting the idea for that chapter as they're writing it and that's what this book felt like to me yeah, it was just uh, a mess, and, uh, and I feel like it was trying to execute what a lot of other books we've read have done well, right? So, like, it felt like towards the end of the book, it was trying to execute, like, the family dynamics that we saw in um, Things We Never Got Over and Things We Had From the Light. Total uh, miss in that regard. And then, like, we just, you know this when this comes out the week prior to this we just reviewed um people we meet on vacation which is also a second chance future past or present past flip throughout the book but it was executed so much better than funny you should ask so i feel like it was a lot of concepts that are like 
prevalent throughout romance literature today, but the execution just was a total miss. Um, and the characters were not very likable. There was like one or two side characters that I liked, kind of, um, but we didn't even get enough of them for it to like mean anything. And this is like a shorter book. So I, in my head, I'm just like, either you should have made it longer to kind of build out these relationships and stuff, or you should have just like cut to the chase and cut some of this extra stuff out. But yeah, it was kind of a hot mess. Yeah, that's kind of, so I, I, I felt like it took a bunch of elements from a bunch of different books and then mm -hmm. like, particularly in the third act that there was just so many different elements from different books that I have read that were thrown into this. That just, it was like, whoa, okay, let's, let's slow down for a second and what the hell is happening? Like, let's kind of, yeah, like, go through this a little bit more slowly. So I felt like either she, this, this is, this is like kind of like proving that I think that this book was pants and not plotted. Um, that there's like, it just felt like as she was reading a book, because I, listen, I'm guilty of this. Okay. So I'm not going to be a hater about this. Whenever I watch something or read something, I get an idea that is similar to the thing that I'm consuming. Yeah. And I, I use that as inspiration to write something different and new. So like, this is different and new, but it, you can tell that it came from, el that it's popular elements from other books that have been done in the exact same way. Yeah. It just needed yeah. some more substance in a lot of these plot points. And like, I don't know, it was just, they all congealed yeah. into this hot mess. And I hate the them end. both. I just, yeah. They're yeah, not likable. They're not likable. <laughs> okay, so I guess that brings us into, would we recommend this book to a fellow reader? To be quite honest with you all, no, I would not. Um, I I didn't, okay, here's the thing. I don't hate this book. Like, I don't, I think that this is like a, a God's honest trying to make a good book, but just like it landing flat. So I don't think it's bad, um, but I would not tell anybody to read this book. So I would, however, I will read her other book that she wrote because I, I'm interested to see if it's similar to this, if she like learned anything from this book, but. Yeah, I like, I feel a lot like I did and uh, I guess a little less so, but after I finished Love in the Time of Serial Killers, which we, it was like one of the very first books we reviewed. But what I said in that podcast episode was that, like, I felt like the author had a lot of really great starts, but the execution was the problem, and the characters weren't as likable, which is the same way I feel now. So I feel like the author um, has, like, a lot of good starting points. I see where she was trying to go with a lot of stuff, it's just that the execution didn't quite come off as planned, and, like, the just giant cluster of tropes and crap at the end um was kind of a miss so I wouldn't recommend this and I'll say this too I the same time I've been reading this I've been reading through one of the Bridgerton novels because I've been on a kick with that show lately and that's a book where I'm like up until like you know 1 or 2 a.m reading it because I can't put it down and stuff like that and so it's really hard for me to recommend books where it's hard for me to even finish them when there's so many books out there that are like just that compelling, right? So I wouldn't recommend this to a fellow reader. Yeah. Um, I would give the author a chance, right? When she comes out with more works, if she has another book, give those. But this one just was not it for me. And I know most of the people who like, I know at least what most of the people who follow along with the podcast are looking for. And this is not what you're looking for. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. So. Um, I was gonna say that two things. One, Kate loves Bridgerton. She she read all the books I think last year. So if you need to talk to him about with them, she if you need to talk to somebody about okay. them, she's the go to. Second of all, I was up late last night reading a book. Oh. Ah! <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we'll talk about that uh later um, if you're up late reading it i feel like that's a good sign i say i was up i was i fell asleep after reading the second chapter but i was up late oh. reading <laughs> okay <it. laughs> but i was up late because i could not put the bridgerton book down and no, it's the Penelope i also read Collins i also one. read part of the book that we're supposed to read for next week and i've got okay. thoughts on that one already too. <laughs> um 
Anyway, so, okay, would you recommend this book to, like, your sisters or anybody who's under the age of majority? Um, no, because I wouldn't recommend it in general. I mean, there's, like, one question, like, there's one smut scene in the book, really. Um, and it's, like, a little descriptive, but, like, I also just think as... My, and my sisters are very intelligent, but the fact of the matter is they're newer readers than Maddie or and I, right? We've consumed a lot more literature in our somewhat longer lives than our teenage sisters. Yeah, we're um, like eight and so, than them. We're like so <laughs> compared to them. <laughs> so I think the structure in this book is a little too confusing too if you're not like well-versed in reading. And I think that detracts from the enjoyment and I think it would be a little more difficult for them to like buy in as newer readers even like finishing this book Mm -hmm. um from a substantive standpoint like I didn't think it was like that filthy or anything but like I just wouldn't I probably wouldn't recommend it still yeah I was just thinking um so the format of this book with having each of like the having each chapter separated by like a news article not even news it's a gossip column, a tabloid. I was trying Basically. to think of the word tabloid. Um, it reminded me a lot of the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. He also does that in his book. And mm. it is done so well in that book. You get such a good, like, that book is, it's not a romance book. It's a its a horror mystery. It's a little bit more mystery than horror. I mean, it's there's like... Mm-hmm blood and graphic stuff but it, it's mostly it's mostly mystery and um in that book it's about like girls who were final girls in like real serial killings and they like survived they were like the last person survived and then like movies were made about them so like they're like okay. there's a girl who was the inspiration for halloween there's a girl who was the inspiration for nightmare on elm street stuff like that Oh, and then, okay. So they have, and then like these girls that like, go to a group therapist, like group therapy to like talk about their things. And then they start dying. They start getting murdered. And they're like, okay, they're trying, some, something's happening to these final girls. Like what's happening? And uh, yeah, it basically like in between each chapter, it, it sets up the next chapter by talking about where, like why they need therapy. You kind of understand like, the emotional manipulation that these women went through after their huge events and like having like, all this media attention and having like, uh, I don't know, having to like go to therapy, getting deals, getting money for them mm-hmm. to make movies about them. And it, it just, it made so much sense in that context to have that in there. And this, it just didn't serve any purpose. Well, I think part of what was confusing for me is that like, there, there's portions from Hani's article that she wrote about Gabe, which is like the center focal point of the story, right? Um, but there's also excerpts from like other gossip articles and stuff like that. But a lot of times when Hani's is included, it's like a brief description. And then that chapter delineates what happened in actuality. But it's just kind of confusing. I wish the author would have just stuck with like using Hani's article and then explaining what actually happened between the two characters. Mm-hmm. Because I think throwing all this other stuff in, like, I don't know, it, it detracted from the use of like the the articles and reports themselves. So that or don't include Hani's article at all and just allude to it. Right. As the characters are unfurling this conflict as they try to come back together. I think the use of, like, both was just kind of confusing. And it wasn't executed well. As many of these these concepts and these tropes in this book were not executed well. Yeah. Okay, so then moving on, let's talk about our four pillars. So Courtney and I, we have four pillars that we like to rate all of our romance books on and that is the witty banter character development smut and realism so we're going to start out with the witty banter courtney oh and by the way this is on a scale of one to five because 10 is too many simply too many look at tank he's nursing (laughs) he was taken away from his mommy when he was too little okay he nurses sometimes when he's i don't know tired (laughs) okay anyway 
Um, yeah. So what would you give it for Woody Banter? (laughs) Um, I'll go first if you need a moment. No, I'm just trying to decide how mean I want to be. Like a two. I'll be generous Mm -hmm. with a two. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't, I feel like the problem is that I feel like, okay, Here's the problem for me. Gabe is supposed to be an actor, a Hollywood actor. Yeah. Supposed to be beloved by all. Chris Evans. Punky, brawny, um, Montana actor man. And he had no personality whatsoever. Um, So anything that could have been witty just kind of fell flat. I will say his friend... um, so Oliver, was that his name? Yeah. He, like, had some good uh, banter, perhaps, with Hani back and forth. But, like, I don't know. I, he was just, like, a faceless man to me, Gabe was, while reading this book. And so I just, there was, like, no chemistry. I felt like the banter was almost non-existent. But some of the other interactions contained some. So I will be generous with a two. I don't think there's any banter in this book at all, actually. <laughs> there's a couple of lines that made me laugh, but the, it was not bantery. It was her talking to herself. That's so, fair. like, I don't I, I don't think there was any banter. So I am going to give it that one. It was That's, one. Fair. That's uh, fair. What about the uh, character development in this book? We have, we have an interesting situation here of we have three days – Every 10 years. So. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard. So I will mention, because it's kind of like a prominent part of the book, and I don't think it's a huge spoiler, that um, Gabe struggles with alcoholism, and he goes to rehab. But because he is a personality-less blob man in my head after reading this book, it's hard for that to, like, mean a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I don't know, Hani, like, when we meet her in the present, she's still, like, very much insecure about her career because she feels like it was just built on this interview that she did with Gabe and everything else kind of, like, has been because of that, not because she's, like, a good writer. People are interested in what she has to say, but it's because of, like, the intrigue and the speculation about the interview that she did with him. Um... So I didn't feel like there was a ton of character development. And even, I mean, like, they don't even get together until, like, the very, very, very end, really. Um, And there's still, like, a ton of miscommunication. So I felt like it was kind of not great. Um, And I can see that there was some character development. But I, I don't know, a two- Again, I'm being generous, trying to be generous, so I'll give it a two. Um, I okay here. So let's let's break down their character developments without spoilers. So like, we have Chani, Hani, 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 like you said, um, <laughs> who starts out. She's starting out her career, and she is very nervous about it. She just broke up with her boyfriend who's the fucking worst and he's he's awful he like talks down to her like demeans her writing and stuff and like she's doing like these articles she never explicitly says why she's doing these articles she doesn't have any real interest in interviewing in fact she's bad at it because that's like the whole joke between her and Gabe is that she's a bad interviewer so she's like asking these really awful bad questions and then we have um, uh, we have um, Gabe Gabe's character <laughs> development. Yes, thank you. I was I literally I lost like I could not like I lost all my thoughts. I didn't have any thoughts. <laughs> Brain dump. Yeah, I, no thoughts. Head empty right there. That was a head empty <laughs> moment. <laughs> anyway, so. Gabe, his character development, or his character starts out as being an alcoholic, and he's a celebrity, he's playing James Bond, he doesn't feel like he deserves 
the position that he got and he is an alcoholic and he's drinking a lot and he, he has a dog. By the end of the book, I don't think this is like too much of a spoiler or anything like that. By the end of the book, Gabe, he he's sober and um, Hani is still writing these articles and she's feeling like she has been defined by this one interview that she did with Gabe for her entire career. Because of that, which is something that I think we'll get into the realism. I think that part is probably pretty realistic, you know, feeling like you do this one thing and then you're tied to this man for the rest of your life, even if you don't want to. And everybody thinks that you slept with him and all this stuff. But the execution of it is just like, you get, you get the now chapter. The first chapter is the now chapter and we learn all of this stuff. And we're like expecting to see by the end of the book, so many things that have changed. But it just doesn't, it just doesn't hit. There's just no real change in who they are as people. There's mm-hmm. no real change in really their careers. I mean, they're, they're not where they want to be, but they're not failing. And honestly, Hani, kind of a bad writer, not gonna lie. I don't know why this world has decided that this article is so amazing and awesome it is boring and also kind of cringe i've never read like a tmz article and then like one when i read (laughs) articles from magazines and stuff like that which is rare Mm -hmm. um the only magazine i have a subscription to is architectural digest (laughs) i'm pretty sure it's the same for maddie um but like i don't look up the authors afterward and i don't know if that's just like a me thing or whatever but she's like i i I guess really what catapults her recognition with the article is like the speculation about whether or not they like hooked up or anything you know uh but like i don't know I was just like, I, how are people that into an article? Even viral articles, I hardly ever read. I just don't understand, like, how... What, okay, I don't understand what time period this is supposed to be taking place in. Because it's like, nothing changes over 10 years in the form of, like, communication and stuff. So, like, is it 10 years from now? Or are we living in the 10 years now? You would think so. I mean, like, cell phones and stuff were still prevalent back in... 2013 well what i'm trying to get at is that like the me too era would never let somebody be defined by this now there i mean like if you can't say that this takes place in a post 2017 world and still Mm -hmm. have a woman only being defined by whether or not she slept with somebody else yeah i suppose that's true i don't know there's a lot of confusing parts about this book i will say though and i noted this down but like Maddie and I don't like it when authors make pop culture references in their books. And this author made like vague pop culture references, right? So like she was she, when there's a scene where they're like at a club or something, right? And a song plays and she's like, "Oh my god, I love this song." Never says what song it is, just describes it as like a prominent song. Like that's the way to do a pop culture reference where it doesn't date the book. Because mm-hmm. I can read this. I mean, you can look up when it came out, but like, and have absolutely no idea when it's supposed to take place over the last thirty years. And there's some books that you read, you read that were written in like 2012, and like then they're like, "To you, yeah." And then they're like, "The LMFAO song came in, <laughs> in the background," and you're like, "Wow, <laughs> okay." I really love Kesha's TikTok. It's the new yeah. song right now. So I guess that's like a baby compliment that I can give the author is that like that's the right way to do pop culture references without making it like cringy or dating the literature yeah and all the pop culture references that are made in the book are made to like old 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 movies or musicals and stuff like that yeah I think that it that it was uh you know what this has to be I just totally this has to be in a post 2017 world if they're making a remake of a movie that's already been made true so, and a movie that's problematic, and they're making it not problematic. This it has to be the woke now. era. So this this make this book makes no sense anyway. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> moving on, let's talk about the smut in this book. Uh, 
unfulfilling oh yeah that was a huge letdown right so they there's one smut scene in this book one single smut scene and there was zero chemistry whatsoever like i don't know it just i didn't even i wanted it to be i wanted it to be over as i was reading it and that should never be the case with smut scenes like so the smut's got i mean like it's there it exists, but it was awful. So I'm gonna give it a one. I'm not even gonna be generous. On I'm that. gonna give it a one. Also, I felt I had a very similar feeling of like I didn't even know what was happening until it was like he was. I'm not even gonna get into it. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, that's what's happening right now. I I just they have no chemistry. They just have n- nothing. And like, there's nothing that anybody can tell me that will convince me that this is a successful relationship in the future so (laughs) not a chance yeah uh okay so let's move on to the realism we'll talk about that real briefly um i don't have a whole lot to say i do think it is realistic in a in a pre-2017 world for a woman to be tied to a man in a way that's like oh did she sleep with him oh she slept with him like for an example let's think about like kim kardashian right her big claim to fame is that she slept with somebody famous and they had the infamous sex tape but then you have like her now and the first thing you think about when you think about kim kardashian is not her sex tape no it's not it's also not even like kanye west or anything no which is more recent but like it's about her family or her fashion or the fact that she brought her child to the met gala um like (laughs) Stuff like that. That the men in her life were not at the forefront of your brain. So yeah, mm-hmm. I totally agree. But I mean, that part is realistic. However, no, they, you got to do semi. What is it? Semicolon. Semicolon. However, comma. However, comma. <laughs> um, they like she does the interview initially. They hang out afterwards because they have to build up some sort of rapport, right? Nothing happens, basically. She writes the article, and then she moves across the country. And it alludes to the fact that they've been thinking about each other during these 10 years that they've been apart, after three days. And they both move on with their lives. They have other love interests, stuff like that. And then they come back together, and that takes course over three days. And it starts in LA and ends in Montana. And I am still confused how we got from, like, the L.A. to the Montana part. Me too. Like, I have no idea how we got there. <laughs> I'm, I'm baffled because I got to the point where they were going to Montana. And I was like, when did they Why? decide they were going to Montana? Like, <laughs> this was not a part of their original plan. No. And then they confessed their love to each other after spending a total of six days together throughout the course of ten years. And, like, all this other crap in between. And he's like, it's always been you. And I was like, how? How has it always always been been her? her? (laughs) Like, I don't, yeah. So that was crap. Um, That was super unrealistic. And also, I mean, like, is it, the fact of the matter is most celebrities marry other celebrities. And they only marry other celebrities. Even if they get divorced, remarried, whatever, right? So the fact that they, like, end up together is a little unrealistic i will say like her her career stuff that's more so realistic him being an alcoholic sure that's realistic but the overall plot was just kind of wackadoodle and not like in a good way you know like things we never got over like the end of that book's kind of crazy it's a little fantastical but i still found it more realistic than what the author was trying to spin here um so i'll give it a two Okay. So what is your overall <laughs> rating for this? I overall gave it a two. I felt like it's just not bad. It's not horrible. It did not make me super angry and pissed off like Twisted Love, which is my epitome of a one-star review. Or And it wasn't as boring to me as Anna Manhattan. But I gave it a two because it's just a mess. Yeah. Like, it's – you can see where the author's trying to go – I And, like, as mad as I was when we reviewed Love in the Time of Serial Killers, at least that had a cohesive plot. And I could follow everything that was happening start to finish. 
Yeah. This was just a mess. And half the time when things were happening, I was like, why is this happening? There was not enough backstory or time to develop this. And it's just kind of coming out of nowhere. Um, I don't know. The concepts could have been good. The book should have been longer if she was doing what she was trying to do. Um, I didn't hate it. I But I just didn't find the characters likable. And I would rather spend my time reading books that, like, make me feel excited. Or even, like, just passive. But this one was just, like, eh. So, a two. Like, it's not... I don't actively hate it, but I don't have warm regards towards this piece. Yeah, so I I, I, I came up with six points last night on Goodreads about <laughs> okay. why I didn't like this book. And I'm going to tell you all of them right now to justify Perfect. my two. One, their chemistry is non-existent. It, the, there's no chemistry in this book. Okay, I don't believe for one second that these two are soulmates in any capacity because they just have no chemistry none um also side note kind of a weird thing about it she talks about how she had a poster of him on her wall how that's what i'm saying like i that's why i don't understand how this is not an age gap teenage heartthrob two they're unlikable both of them are deeply flawed and that is it they have no redeeming qualities neither of them are good at anything and i hated it i hated them (laughs) um it seemed like a huge part of her doing these things with gabe both then and now is to get back at her ex-boyfriend it felt like a lot of it was like a revenge plot for her to be like, well, screw you, Jeremy. I'm going to go with this one guy that you're like deeply insecure about because she talks about how he's like before she, when she's on her way to the interview the first time, how um, her boyfriend never have approved of it because he was her because Gabe was her celebrity crush, her celebrity hall pass. And that if Jeremy had known, he would be super insecure about it. And they had just broken up after that point up to there. And then the second time, she's going back to do this interview because she and Jeremy have just recently divorced. So, like, this whole plot just seemed like it was like, I'm going to get back at Jeremy for being such a jerk by going after the one person he hates. Yeah. Okay. I can see it. Four. The third act, like I mentioned, is a mess, uh, is a random mess of different romance books and unnecessary new characters. There's just so much going on in that third act that I literally was, I was, I was thinking about getting up and tabbing it so that I could tab how, like, we just go from plot point to plot point to plot point to plot point that don't connect. Right. Okay. Uh, five. I was very confused about how old Gabe was supposed to be up until the very end, because at the very end it mentions that he's, like, 30 in the past, which he's, he's like, 40 now, so... And then uh, six, finally, there was so much repetition. I don't know. I don't need to know how things happened a hundred times in a flashback, in an article, in in reminiscing, in dialogue, and in somebody else's point of view. Yeah, just needs to be mentioned once. Um, My notes, one was like the the references, right? Um, Pop culture references, but I already kind of mentioned that. The other was just the dialogue was shit, to be honest with you. Um, And this isn't like a huge giveaway, but I specifically noted this. The first time that they kiss, which is in the past, right? The the dialogue that leads to that is he goes, hey, and she goes, hey, and then they kiss and that's it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I just ripped out my headphones. Like he looks at her and he's like, hey, hey, and then she says, hey, back. And I'm like, wow. I'm burning up over here. I actually, the... ironically, this is totally off topic. Okay, <laughs> let me just show you. So you know when people do this? And it's yeah. like supposed to look like they're kissing? I actually learned that from a James Bond movie. <laughs> it was from one of the old ones. Wow. I... <laughs> yeah, I learned that from a James Bond movie. I just realized that. Oh, the irony. Um, one final comment. Again, not a huge giveaway because we already said that there's smut. But when the smut occurs, 
Uh, she refers to them as horny octopuses slash octopi question mark and i was like "Ooh, hot hot wow how Nothing many gets limbs me going, going like on that. Right <laughs> yeah horny octopi okay way to ruin the ocean for me yep <laughs> awful <laughs> i can never go swimming again <laughs> Because of the horny octopi. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to get attacked, but that's what the Kraken is. He's just a horny <laughs> octopi. <laughs> we just see those, like, you know, the mermaids that they have on the front of pirate ships, and they're like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I'd like to see her seashells. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Courtney and I are going to move on to the spoiler section. So if you have not read this book yet, and you want to still read this book after this review... Hop off, reason. come back after you're done reading it, and maybe you will understand our perspective a little bit better. Um, but if you have read it or you don't care, welcome to the spoiler section. It's good to have you here. Uh, okay, so let's talk. Let's talk spoilers. Let Let's do that. What should we start with? Should we start with the beginning? I feel like I don't want to jump all over the place, so let's just discuss like start to finish right okay so let's start with the first day from 10 years as i say three years ago from 10 years ago all right basically she is i had zero chill when it came to gabe parker if jeremy and i were still dating there'd be a major possibility he would have tried to veto this interview Right off the gate. Okay. We are establishing that Gabe Parker is a dreamy, dreamy man with dreamy, dreamy thoughts in his dreamy, dreamy head, according (laughs) to Honey. And Honey is like, damn, like, he's so hot. I can't wait to go meet him and interview him. I have questions prepared, but whatever. So she gets there and she, like, meets him and she, like, gets all flustered and stuff like that. So she starts asking like the same questions that she's already researched people asking she just like doesn't ask any of her own original questions which leads me to believe that she never even prepared any of her own questions she just thought that maybe she could wing it which is also why i thought she was young because this is something that young people do that they think that they know everything and can just do everything but they can't yeah and like I, it was just the dialogue was so boring, right? What the author was trying to convey is that, like, he would get, like, kind of turned off when she would ask the questions everyone else asks. But then she would ask, like, random questions that he would be, like, intrigued by. But then she would ask a wrong question and he would withdraw again. And he also ordered four beers during the course of their lunch. It's like my dad. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um,. So I was like, okay, but it was also so boring to read. It was so boring. Yeah. Um, and then he's like, hey, do you want to get out of here? And I was like, wow, that came from nowhere. Yeah, so they go to a restaurant. And, oh, by the way, he's got a puppy with him. Okay, a little puppy. And they go to this restaurant, and she's like, everybody's like assuming that she's there like on a date with him. And the staff are like really mean to her because they're like that's our guy don't be mean to our guy i think the server knows that she's interviewing him because every time she asks like a pushy question the server comes over but Mm. i don't know again it wasn't clear i don't know but yeah so they they go to hollywood and he's like asking her questions about growing up in la and stuff like that and he's like it's so cool that you grew up in LA. And she's like, it's just like everywhere else. Like, I'm not like other LA girls. I, I'm imagining her saying like, I'm not like other LA girls. Like, I am really different than the rest of them. And I hate New York. Yeah, and New York is like so bad. Like, I, I listen, I've got vocal fry. I know I do. But I'm picturing her with major vocal fry. <laughs> Yeah, fair. Are you guys serious right now? I just, like, love LA. 
Yeah. Yeah, so she, I mean, I don't know. She, like, gets, a, she, like, drinks with him and, like, she gets, like, a little, a little drunk off of her one beer. Same. Yeah. Can't judge her Oh, and he's that. like, I've read all of your stuff. In your yeah. Sure. He's like, I read your okay. whole blog. Because he's, like, asking her personal questions about Jeremy and stuff. And he's like, I read your blog and I read your past articles and everything like that. And she's like, oh, my God. Gabe Parker knows who I am? No way. Mm. Which is, like, due diligence for him. But apparently. Yeah, like, making sure you're not crazy. He's like, you're such a good author. Which is so <laughs> Because at the end of the freaking book, he's like, I fell in love with you before I even met you because of your journal articles. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's a plot hole, though, because he, so, like, he has basically this arranged marriage to his co-star. Jacinda right? Lockwood. And he doesn't, like, he kind of wants to go through with it, kind of doesn't after he meets her. But he, but then later on in the book when he's, like, explaining to her, he was like, it was never, like, we always had the arrangement. It only got complicated when I met you and I saw those big eyes. But then he said he was in love with her before he met her. So I'm like, I'm confused. Yeah. He also mentions, like, that he had, like, this whole plan with her. But then he also talks about how it was, like, spontaneous and that they were just, like. Yeah. Um... Also, Wait. Honey is just, like absolutely insufferable in her diary entries she truly thinks that she is like us she is very self-righteous and self-important she thinks that she is like the greatest thing that ever happened thinks she's the shit yeah yes she does so Um, he invites her to a movie premiere the next day oliver um and she goes and there's like a little excerpt where it's describing when she's getting ready that was boring shit to read um it's like i'm not like a wealthy star so i don't have dresses to wear to things like this so i just wore a dress that i had and i was like okay right oh also she went to school in iowa yeah she went to a private school this girl is not on un- no she's lying to she's lying straight to our faces but i also like i Well, that is a good point. That is private school. But I bring that up because she's like, I love LA. I'm like, I, I live in Nebraska. I live in Omaha, Nebraska. So I know the type around here. There is almost no one from California and certainly almost no one from LA because why, if they love LA so much, would they move to the middle of the country where it's humid? It's all ag based. Um, Like that is not a cup of tea and also the universities around here are not renowned for like writing and stuff they're renowned mm-hmm. for like their agri- tech, agricultural tech programs and stuff like that <laughs> yeah so like it's i was just like why iowa of all places it's and she and it was like prestigious and they're all like really good writers and stuff i'm like then why aren't they in at like the ivies or something where did she go like sarah lawrence or something like that i don't know i don't remember Regardless, it's a it's a private school. It's a private school that's like very uh, prestigious. Prestigious and costs a lot of money. Um, it's one that I had to do one of my projects on when I was in oh, grad okay. school. So like I know how much the tuition to that school costs. Also, she well, I has- go to a private school in the Midwest. Also, so yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so she's like. And then she has an FMA or an MFA, which is, did she get that in New York? Because that's extremely expensive to get one of those. So yeah, she's lying straight to our faces. Then moving on, uh, we go to the future and she's getting ready to go and meet Gabe at some place. She apparently has a best friend named Kate, Katie or Kate, I can't remember. Who knows exactly what happens, but she's literally never mentioned in the story. Just at totally all. forgotten about. Yeah, she's there, and then she's not. And then there's Joe, the previous roommate that she doesn't like, which, relatable, but, like... We all have those. Yeah. So... <sighs> I 
I don't know. So they do that. Yeah, and she goes to the premiere. Yeah. And um, we meet the only somewhat interesting character. Oliver. Oliver. Um, we find out and- Oliver is gay hey <laughs> happy almost pride month hey, um, um, yeah and then so. after the premiere they go to a gay club oots, oots. and she has to decide whether or not she wants to out him for her article i was like you horrible awful woman you know who never do this trent Krim from the independent trent Krim would never <laughs> trent Krim from the independent would never consider this uh so like, yeah, she's, like, basically sitting there, like, because part of the reason why the Bond thing is so up in arms, ap- ap- aside from the fact that Gabe is American, it's also that he kissed a dude once. Haven't we all? Also, this is Hollywood. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Although, I'm kind of imagining that maybe it's, like, people not in Hollywood, but, like, the same people who are mad that the Little Mermaid's black now, like, those same people are mad that he kissed a dude once. But, like, what I don't understand is that, like, sometimes, like, the manliest guys kiss other manly guys for fun. Like, at at awards shows and stuff. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, that's certainly true. But also, like, there have been gay people in Hollywood forever who are in hugely prominent films. I mean, like, Gandalf? Gay. Like, that never stopped him. He was in X-Men and Lord of the Rings. Gandalf? Come on. Yeah. (laughs) But, like, he's been an actor for so long, and that has, I mean, like, I feel like Hollywood... You don't think Nick Offerman is, like, a strong dude anymore because of The Last of Us? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Like, I maybe in Hollywood in like the 40s. I don't, but if it's supposed to be present day, and I can understand not wanting to be outed, right? But he directly did not get the position because he was gay, like, and he wouldn't sign a morality clause or yeah. whatever. In and Hollywood like, in 2017. Yeah, that's just not yeah. really like super realistic to me and i don't know like i'm not a gay actor in hollywood so i can't personally attest to this you're not but there is but there have been so many people like ellen degeneres has owned the talk show realm for uh, probably over a decade at this point and she has been out almost the entire time like so that plot point fell a little flat for me i feel like literally if they would have been in any other profession you could have made an argument for like bigoted stuff like that but hollywood is like the number one place where they're um you know promoting that and very open to it so that just didn't make a ton of sense to me but they go to the gay club reminds me of leslie going to the gay club after she marries the penguins (laughs) yeah Yeah. pa 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 poker face my pa poker face (laughs) Yeah, so she's dancing on the dance floor with Oliver, and then she's like, come here. And Gabe's Jay. like, mm, no, I need my alky. Uh, and, and then Gabe and- dances up on her, finally comes through, and then guess what she feels through his pants? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's, what, that's, what, that's what it is. So... Mm, then she's yeah. kind of like, mm. and then Oliver okay. is like, hey, friends. And then that was kind of offensive. He's like, hey, friends. Um, and, <laughs> and You might as well have done this. Hey, friends. <laughs> I know. With Maddie. I know. I know. He's not even like super flamboyant. In I know. <laughs> um, anyway, so he's like, what's up, guys? Uh, and so they stop dancing. Yeah. And then. I don't know how that night ends, but she ends she up at really a party. She gets really drunk. Oh, yes, yes. Drunky. And then she gets... That's also not, like, a good sign that, like, all of her memories with him, she was, like, <laughs> drunk, extremely intoxicated. Yeah, and then she, like, has three sober days with him, and she's like, mm, yeah, I think I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this man. I will also say that, like, the book starts off really slow with references to the past, and then I feel like it speeds up towards the end. Um, 
which is when they should be focusing more so on the present, I think. So that was kind of a mess. But she gets invited to, like, house parties over the next couple days that she goes to with him. And she ends up at one. They play this game. She eats too much candy. And she's feeling sleepy. And then she gets a sugar rush. And she, like, wins the game. And she passes out in his dog's bed. Hot. That would get any man going. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say that dog beds are comfortable. So <laughs> sometimes okay. I just lay in Tank Commando's bed, and the next time I'd open there for like three hours. So, all right. Well, from uh, the source itself, apparently they are comfy. But he wakes her up um, and puts her in his bed. And even though she's not drunk at that point, she doesn't remember, and she like wakes up in his room. She comes out and he's like watching TV. He's watching Star Trek. And he's like, you caught me. I'm a secret nerd. And she's like, me too. And he's like, you like Star Trek? Name your name your favorite Star Trek then. Yeah. She's like, so, Captain Kirk, they like, obviously. Yeah. And um, then they watch his favorite episode, her favorite episode. And then it gets really awkward, and he's like, you can stay in the guest room. And she's like, no, no, I can't. And then he's like, okay. And then she's like, actually, I will. And then he goes to bed, and she leaves. Yeah. She's like, I can't wake up here. And I was like, okay. They do why? make out. They almost Oh, have yeah, sex. that's when they have yeah. the terrible yeah. dialogue where it's like, yeah. hey, hey. And then they kiss, and then she's like, no. Yeah. Stop. She, she stops herself. And he is like, you can't leave. You just stay in the guest room. We'll go out tomorrow, we'll celebrate, or whatever. And then she leaves. And then he just holds it over her head. Like, in the in the last chapters, I'm like, dude, this this is, like, awful. Like, he's literally sitting there being like, well, the reason why we're not together, it, it's all your fault, you know, because you left. I'm like, damn. It should be, like, a normal thing to do. When you feel awkward at another person's house. Yeah. Um, but anyways, in the time... Then, when she leaves, he's like, I'm going to get married to my co-star in Las Vegas right now. Um, and she's like, ooh, that really hurt. Um, and then she ends up with douchebag Jeremy again. And they move to New York. And then they have an awful, terrible relationship where he's like, you suck at writing, and I hate you. Also, and you're like, ugly, and you're so stupid. Yeah. And she's like, and but he, I love you. Yeah, and he's like, you just wouldn't get it. And she tries to help motivate him, and he's like, I'm just not like you because I don't write shitty articles. Honestly, I'm a, I'm a valid. author of books. <laughs> His critiques are valid. Um, And he thinks he's like the next Hemingway, but he's kind of like dog shit also. And then it's giving my favorite movie is Reservoir Dogs by Quentin Tarantino. You just don't <laughs> understand how like interesting it is. Yeah. And then like he embarrasses her at like he makes her go out. She like drops a book of like all of her articles, I guess, or interviews, right? And like he drags her around the city to go sign books and like most of the bookstores don't have it and then he's like oh well like when i release a book all the bookstores have it so i just didn't know and i was like okay you don't Um, know how publishing works and then like (laughs) they're at a party and he gets kind of drunk and someone compliments her and he's like yeah well it like sucks anyways so like, totally embarrasses her. In yeah, front of her and then, like, somebody, like, that same girl's up, and he's like, well, you know that they fucked, right? And she's like, no, we didn't. And he's like, yeah, you did, slut. And I was like, wow. Yeah, and that was that was the tipping point for her, apparently. Yeah, so they get divorced. As um, they should. And then, appar- and then apparently we find out that, like, They've been divorced for a little while, but she just wrote about it on her blog, and that's the whole reason he, like, Gabe was like, you should do another, he had his people reach out to her people and be like, let's do another interview. Um, Because he admits that later on. He's like, I can't believe I didn't know that you were divorced. And she was like, well, okay. And he's like, I just found about it on your blog. And she was like, okay. Like, did you want me to call you and tell you, hey, 
I'm fresh on the market. Like, yeah, things were also, weird. You were also married. Yeah, it's like, but my marriage wasn't even real. And, like, you should have known that. Right. Oh, and then she goes, like, they have one interaction during the 10 years they're apart. He's in a musical and on Broadway. And she goes to see it. And he, like, calls her to the back room. But then his wife is there, like, sitting on his lap. And he's like, wait, it's not what you think. And she's like, it it was your wife sitting on your lap and my husband's at home and this is wrong so i'm gonna leave and he's like no wait and then she leaves um right uh anyways and he was like she surprised me there i didn't know she was coming and and then she was like well she was your wife so like why'd you invite me anyway um yeah but he gets him and his wife get divorced for some reason they never should have been married in the first place they're interesting to an end interesting do you notice how he doesn't mention the reason why they got divorced, just that they did? Yeah. Well, I mean, he said so it was like, like, we just agreed that whenever it wasn't beneficial for our careers anymore, we would just end it. But, like, like I'm assuming it's, like, the alcoholism, then why were you- he was still married to him during rehab. So, he also goes to rehab. Partially- he makes math out of himself. Also... But, like, also she calls, and then Jacinda answers, and is like, stop calling here, Tracy. And then he's like, it's because, it, it's because like, it's a character from the movie we talked about at first. But also, secret. So, like, she must, well, no, what I'm saying is, like, j- j- but I'm also saying that, like, Jacinda must be jealous at some point to, like, act out like that it's like their marriage can't have just been this marriage of convenience because they're both actors i think that gave there was chemistry there yeah i don't know i don't know um he wasn't likable to begin with so i feel free to believe the worst um i think i'm going to choose to believe the worst um yeah and then so he goes to rehab the day after he like calls her drunk and it's like a weird conversation doesn't lead to really anything no like grand confessions or whatever and he doesn't even really remember it then he goes to rehab the next day so it's not like it's not like daisy jones where like it was an instrumental part of their life and the reason they went to rehab was because they talked to that person like he didn't even remember it I feel like it would have been more monumental if he had, like, talked to her and then he was like, wow, my life is shit. I need to go to rehab. But he doesn't even, like, remember the phone call. So that was a mess. And then we finally get to the present where they're doing another interview. They meet up at the diner and then he's like, hey, do you want to get out of here and do something? And she's like, sure. And then they end up in Montana. Um, and he he's introduces like, her. home to meet my mom and my family. Right, but he doesn't, like, preface with that. I'm sure she could glean it based on the fact that they're going to Montana. But it felt like what the author was trying to do was what they what they did and things we never got over where, like, the family is part of the draw-in for their relationship, right? But we get, like, 30 seconds with his mom and his sister and, like, this really awful, back, like, sad backstory with his brother-in-law that, like, was not touched on any point prior in the story. And it's just supposed to be like, yeah, it reminded me of when my dad died. And it's like, okay, well, you didn't really, like, talk about that a ton either. Um, And, like, I don't know. They're just, like, there wasn't enough substance there. Like, they should have gone to Montana halfway through the book. And, like, she should have, like, hung out with his mom and sister alone and stuff like that if she wanted to, like, show that she was like falling in love with the family too but i think that's what she was trying to do but it was so rushed it was just awful and then like they yeah, get into there's an also argument. a part of the book yeah oh i was gonna say there's also a part of the book like right before they go to montana where she talks about how her, her whole dream was to live in like a small town and, like, have, like, a family and, like, walk into a coffee shop where people knew her name. And, like, that's, like, her whole, like, perfect day. And, like, except she never literally hinted at that once. In fact, she's talking about how much she fucking loves L.A. Which is the exact opposite. And then, like, they go back to his apartment. They kind of get, like, they do it. 
and they refer to the octopi disgusting um it's the least climatic it's the most anticlimactic smut scene i've read maybe ever Mm -hmm. um it should have just been fade to black like um yeah it was boring it was bland i wanted it to be over uh and then they like get in this fight and she runs away and hides behind a dumpster and then oliver comes and picks her up and they talk and then like gabe comes and gets her from oliver and (laughs) and He's like, it's now or never. Like, figure out what you want. I'm leaving the keys in the truck. Oh, and by the way, I saw you hiding by the dumpster. And then she's like, she's sitting there in the truck and she's like thinking about the dog looking at her from the window or something. I don't know. Didn't understand what was going on there. And then she's like, no, I want this. She gets out of the car and then they end up together. And then the epilogue is basically just him being like, I love my life and my wife in Montana and I'm happy now, and I'm creating a theater. Yep, a, a pointless theater where I'm going to do shows and plays for my town that I in described Montana. while I was flying in as being easily drivable and very, very, very small. Yeah, oh, and his friend Oliver is also investing in it in Montana. Like, yeah, you know, you know Montana, the place that's like big, like culture scene. Like yeah. you know, it's, like it's easily the accessible. Really love going up there. Yeah, yeah. People visit all the time. Yeah. If there's one thing about Montana, it's the thriving theater community. Yes, indeed. That's the one thing we know about Montana. Forget Broadway. Yeah. Why would you go, go to, to New York, York where there's so many go... other things to do? What was go to Montana. Like? Yeah. Right. So that's it. Yeah, that's the whole book. Uh, mediocre, unfulfilling. Yes, and I'm over it. Me too. You over it, Bob? He's yeah. over it. So I guess that ends this episode. Before we go, though, I think that we should talk about our thing coming out next week. After the, because by the time this video goes up, it'll be next week. Will it? I think this will be week of, won't it? This is uh, the week of the 29th. Um, the 29th, yeah. This is this comes out later this week. So, Courtney, do you want to do the announcement? I have them with me, so. Yes, I shall. So, um, Maddie and I, well, in our most recent uh, in-person visit, we decided to do some fun stuff. We were tossing around the idea of creating, I guess you could call it merch, right? Um, but we were like, what do our listeners need? What do our our, uh, our podcast followers need? Um, so Maddie and I, from our creative uh, minds and uh, our love for books, we have decided we're going to start selling some bookmarks that we created ourselves. We will be dropping a new one each month. Um, we're trying to figure out if we want to do like subscriptions and stuff like that. When we announce later this week on Instagram, we'll kind of delineate how everything will work. Um, but we'll be selling them on Etsy. We'll be dropping a new one each month based on the time of year or like books that we've recently read, stuff like that. Um, I personally love a lot of them. Uh, Obviously, we're a little biased, but we would appreciate any support. Um, And they're really cute. Uh, We might also have some polls going up over the next couple months where you guys can choose what our monthly bookmark will be. Um, But I'm really excited about it, and I think it's a lot of fun. I think they're really cute, Um, and we look forward to sharing them with you later this week. Yeah. So it'll be exciting. You'll find them on Etsy. There'll be a lot more information on our social media. So if you're not already following our social media, it is at the Woody Banter Book Club on Instagram and Pinterest and TikTok. I was about to say Twitter and Facebook. And Facebook yeah. Not Twitter, though. I'm not, I'm not on Twitter. I refuse to, sub- to subject myself to Twitter. Um, yeah, well, it's not really for podcasters anyway 
Yeah. So then so we've got. Platforms are better. We also have, you know, if you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify, thank you so much for listening to us. Um, if you want to see what we're talking about, you can go onto our social medias. But if you're watching on YouTube, you just got like a little sneak peek, a little glimpse. Sneak peek. Um, and I hope you guys like them. So if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also give us a like because that is what we do for YouTube. Um, all in all, I have nothing else to say. Other than next week, we will be reading Behind the Scenes, which is the first of our four-part Pride series for the month of June. I cannot believe we are already about to be in June. I know. It's, like, disturbing. Courtney and I have planned out all the books that we're reading until October. So, like, up until, like, October 1st. So, we know what we're reading for the next few months. And that's crazy to me because it seems, like, so far away. But really, it's, it's not really that far away. I know. We're just getting so, older. Time goes by faster. It scares me how fast time is going now. I can't imagine what's going to be like in a few years. I know. Sickening. I know. Uh, anyways, on that sad note, we I'm appreciate note. Yeah. all of the support. Uh, we look forward to sharing our bookmarks and stuff with you in addition to more podcasts, more book content. Um, and we just thank you all for the love and support so far. And as always, happy reading. Happy reading.